Mrs. Collins went on a business trip, and her daughter Ella stayed in the house alone. Of course, the girl wanted to invite some friends over. Her mother knew it was inevitable, so she permitted Ella to invite no more than two friends. Mrs. Collins also asked a neighbor to keep an eye on her daughter. Here's what the neighbor saw when she approached the house. Is Ella following her mother's instructions? There are five cars parked by the house. Assuming that one of them belongs to Ella, there are at least four more girls in the house, but possibly even more. In any case, Ella invited over way more people than she was allowed to. Jason received a letter from a girl wanting to ask him out. Unfortunately, the letter wasn't signed, so he didn't know who the girl was. He only knew that it must be someone from his class. Take a look around. Which girl sent him the note? The letter is written in purple ink. Look, that girl over there has a purple pen, so she must be the secret admirer. Detective Callum got a call from a local store selling branded shoes. A pair of their expensive high-heeled shoes appeared to have been stolen. Unfortunately, the cameras didn't work that day and the footage wasn't available. But there was a camera at the entrance taking photos of people walking in and walking out of the store. Who is the robber? It's this woman. Look, she's gotten taller on her way out, probably because she's wearing the shoes. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered the hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be a robber who was pretending to be a patient. Can you identify this person? It definitely can't be this pregnant woman, and I doubt it's this old man. This man seems to be blind, but where is his stick then? I bet it's the robber who's wearing shades to pretend to be blind and draw away the police officer's suspicions. Take a look at these three people. One of them isn't a human, but who? It's this woman. Look, the hand behind her head is green. Avery was walking in a forest late at night. There was the full moon and she encountered three werewolves. Well, actually just two because one of them isn't a real werewolf. Which one? It's this one right here. Look, there's a zipper, so he's obviously wearing a costume. Okay, now take a look at this photo of people in a restaurant. One of them is a vampire hunter in disguise. If you were a vampire, who would you avoid at all costs? You'd have to avoid the place overall because it's the cook. Look, he's adding garlic to the dishes. Now let's check how attentive you are. Now I'll be showing you some photos and you have to find out what's wrong or odd about them. Here's the first one. What do you say? Look, the ghost is plugged into a socket. Here's another one, again with a ghost. Are you attentive enough to notice what's wrong with this one? This ghost casts a shadow. You're doing great. Here's the next one. Keep your eyes wide open. What do you see? This vampire is tanned. Those guys never see sunlight, so they're very pale. Okay, the next one is just as tricky. 
We're in a house of a vampire. Can you notice what's wrong here? Look at the picture in the background. The vampire is on it, but vampires can't be photographed. Paige wasn't doing well in school, so she was grounded for all the winter holidays and forced to study. Her father would work the night shifts, so quite often he wasn't at home for a long time, so Paige would often sneak out. She was very careful, so it would go unnoticed. But one early morning, the father came back and realized that Paige had sneaked out at night for a party. How did he figure it out? Look, Paige's car is the only one in the neighborhood that's not snow covered. It means that she's recently used it. Mrs. Jones grounded her teenagers for throwing a party in the house the previous weekend. They weren't allowed to go out for two weeks and were under strong supervision. On Saturday, Mrs. Jones left for an hour to go grocery shopping. When she returned, she figured out that someone had sneaked out for that hour. Evie said, I was watching Netflix. Dale said, I was texting with a friend. Kaya said, I just finished taking a shower. Who sneaked out? Kaya, if she had really just taken a shower, the bathroom mirror would be misted. But look, it's all clear, so she got an additional week at home. How about a refreshing brain workout? If you're ready, let's start. A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the Swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How? It was the door he had entered through. You return from your lunch break and discover that someone has stolen $50 from your bag. There are four suspects. Mila, Henry, Jackson, and Victoria. When you ask them about the money, Mila replies she hasn't taken it. Henry says he's pretty sure Jackson's got the money. Jackson shouts, no way, Henry's lying. And Victoria claims Mila's telling the truth. Only one of these people isn't lying. Who's taken your money? It's Mila. She, Henry, and Victoria are lying while Jackson's telling the truth. If anyone else had taken your $50, there would be more than one person telling the truth. Several sparrows landed on trees. One bird for one tree. But in this case, one of them didn't have a tree of its own. Then they regrouped with two sparrows sitting on one tree. After this, one tree was left birdless. How many birds and trees were there? There were four sparrows and three trees. Three famous detectives came to a cafe to discuss a tricky case. A waiter came up to them and asked, Does everyone want coffee? The first detective said, I don't know. The second detective answered, I don't know. And the third detective said, Yeah. Why did he say no? All the detectives wanted to have coffee, but the first two couldn't know if it could be everyone's choice. If the first two detectives hadn't wanted coffee, they'd simply have said no. So when the third detective heard the replies of his colleagues, he figured out that both of them wanted coffee. And since he was also going to have a cup, he said yes. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is an alien in disguise. It's the guy in a yellow shirt. He's eating a banana, but he hasn't peeled it before biting into it. He probably sees this fruit for the first time. You have an equation made of matchsticks. 
six plus four equals four. Move just one matchstick to make it true. You need to take one matchstick from the plus sign and add it to six so that it makes eight. Then you'll have eight minus four equals four. Look at this picture. All these people seem to be very close, but who is the girl's husband? It's the guy on the right. He's the only one to have a wedding band on his finger. The next riddle to check how attentive you are. Who is her husband? It's the guy on the left. Look, here's his photo in the car. He's actually the owner of this vehicle. Can you figure out what's wrong here? Um, these guys seem to be wearing smartwatches. Hey, detective! Your next task is to understand where the criminal is hiding. Make sure to pay attention to every detail. The criminal is in house A. The car next to his house is parked in a way that makes it easier for the criminal to drive away as fast as possible. Can you figure out which of these people is in the greatest danger? It's this guy. This large icicle is about to fall right on his head. Is the person in the yellow car driving right or wrong? It's a wrong and very dangerous way of driving. The car is moving very slowly, and to overtake it, the next driver will have to maneuver from the leftmost lane to the right one. It can easily cause an accident. How can you get from 98 to 720 by just adding one letter? Add the letter X between 90 and 8. You'll get 90 times 8 equals 720. Timothy invites Cherry over for dinner at home. But unfortunately, Cherry's ex-boyfriend Drake had already found them. He captures Timothy and Cherry at the farmer's house. Suddenly, the phone rings. Drake allows Timothy to take the phone, but he can't reveal the situation. Otherwise, Drake will use his magic wand to turn them into snakes. So Timothy replies, Hey mom, how can I help you? I'm home and about to go to bed. If it's not an emergency, can I call you later? I'm really sleepy. 30 minutes later, the police arrive, confiscate the magic wand, and rescue the guys. How did Timothy ask for help? He held the mute button saying everything except the words help, home, emergency, and call. The detective gives Drake a chance to get freedom. He can pass through one of these three doors. Jungles full of dangerous animals are hiding behind the first door. Behind the second door, there's a tank with ice water that is impossible to stand in for even a minute. And there's a giant fire-breathing dino behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? Drake should pick the third door. Dinos don't breathe fire, and they went extinct millions of years ago. Drake returns to his castle and discovers that someone had broken all the bottles with his precious potions in his lap. Drake gets furious and interrogates his three goblin servants. Willie says, I was cleaning the castle all day long. I didn't even enter your lab today. Tilly says, 
I was picking roses in the garden in the morning. Then I entered your lab to bring rose petals for your potions. Everything was fine. And Billy says, I was cooking dinner in the kitchen and then I went to the bathroom to take a quick shower. Who's lying? Tilly, he didn't pick the roses, they're still in the garden. Meanwhile, Timothy drives Cherry home. They stop to buy something on the way. Can you guess what exactly by just looking at this image? Kiwi. Then Timothy takes two pictures of Cherry. Can you find 10 differences between them? Here they are! Someone robbed Cherry's house when she was on a picnic on the 4th of July. The detective finds four suspects and questions them about what they were doing that day. Bobby, the fireman, says, I was on duty the day before. I was very tired, so I went sleeping all day long. Nick is a student. He says, I was celebrating Independence Day with my family. Rick, the manager, says, It was a holiday and I was playing games with my roommates. Then we watched TV all night. And Kyle, the postman, says, I was at the post office all day. All my colleagues saw me. The detective identifies the robber immediately. What about you? It was Kyle. He couldn't work at a post office on the 4th of July. It's a public holiday. Cherry receives her first salary and hides the cash in her closet. Cherry's three roommates are not at home at this time. So she just leaves the money and goes to the gym right away. After a while, Cherry returns home and discovers that her money had been stolen from the closet. She starts looking all over the room, but finds no clues. Suddenly, her three roommates enter the room. Cherry asks each of them, Has anyone stolen my money? Bella replies, I was in college all day. I just got home from lunch and I didn't enter this room. Anna says, I came home for lunch as well, but after Bella. I opened the closet door to look for some documents, but there was no money inside. And Megan says, I had no idea that you were hiding cash in the closet. I just returned from work. You should talk to the security guard. Who's the thief? Bella must have concluded that if Cherry is searching this room, money should have been stolen only from here, so she doesn't sound suspicious. But Anna said that she had searched the closet and found no money. Meanwhile, Cherry didn't mention the closet in the first place. Therefore, Anna is the thief. Marjorie owns a farm. There are six apple trees and seven lemon trees on her land. Each apple tree has 12 fruits, and each lemon tree has 10 fruits. How many oranges are there in total? Zero. We didn't say that Marjorie has any orange trees. Marjorie inserts her diamond ring in a glass bottle and closes it with the help of a cork. Then she takes the ring out of the bottle without taking out the cork or breaking the bottle. Can you guess how she did it? Easy! She pushed the cork inside the bottle and then took out the ring. Marjorie lost her smartwatch somewhere in the fields. She uses her phone to detect the current location of her gadget. The phone draws three possible routes, but only one of them will actually take her to the smartwatch. Can you help Marjorie choose the right way? Route A is correct. 
Early in the morning, Marjorie enters one of the farm's barns. Oh no! Someone broke all the bottles with cherry juice! She asks her three workers to clean up the mess. Meanwhile, she interrogates them. Who did it? Marjorie asks. Frank replies, "Uh, Yesterday in the afternoon, I put all the cherry juice bottles on the shelves and left home. I don't know what happened. Phil says, I didn't feel well last night, so I didn't touch the juice, and I went to bed early. And Anna says, Yesterday, I painted the fence all day. I didn't even enter the barn. Who's lying? Anna. She said she painted the fence, but it doesn't look freshly painted at all. After a long working day, Marjorie wants to relax and goes to the public swimming pool. She spots something really weird in the shower. One of these ladies is not from this planet. Can you guess who? The third lady. She's using ketchup to wash her hair instead of shampoo. Marjorie meets her three best friends by the pool, Megan, Sarah, and Raven. One of them gave birth to triplets four years ago. Can you guess who exactly? Raven. Take a look at her hands. She's wearing three DIY bracelets with the word mom. The triplets are now four years old, and her jewelry looks like something that they could have crafted. Marjorie and her besties go to a concert, but only one of these people is a real musician. Can you guess who? It's the second guy. The first lady put her sheet music upside down. After the concert, Marjorie takes a walk down the local street. There are 100 houses numbered from 1 to 100 on the street. Can you count how many times they use the digit 9 to number all the houses? The correct answer is 19. The mystery can be solved using simple math. The digit 9 should occur in the following numbers. All we need to do is to count the number of 9s in this sequence. Marjorie comes home late at night and sees something creepy in her living room. Can you see it too? There are three ghosts in this room. What about the warehouse? Can you spot any ghosts here? Hello? Let's take a look at the bedroom. Ooh, there are five ghosts. Can someone call Ghostbusters? The next morning, Marjorie goes picking apples on her farm. Suddenly, someone spills cherry juice on her head. She noticed that someone climbed on a tree to pull that prank, but she didn't see this person's face. So Marjorie interrogates three people working on the farm that day. Frank says, I was watering vegetables far away from the apple trees. Phil says, I was in the kitchen preparing ingredients for the lemon jam production, just like you asked me. And Nina says, I was in the garden picking lemons for the jam. Marjorie figures out who did it right away. What about you? It was Phil. He tore his shirt, and a piece of fabric got stuck on the branch of an apple tree. A group of tourists arrives at the farm, and Marjorie gives them a fun tour. Unfortunately, one of these guests is a thief. Can you guess who? This lady. 
she's sneaking cash from another person's purse. It's raining heavily all day, so Marjorie stays home alone and fries pancakes in the kitchen. Suddenly, she realizes that she had forgotten to switch off the TV in the living room and goes there. In a minute, Marjorie returns to the kitchen and gets speechless. Why? Can you guess? When Marjorie left the kitchen, one prepared pancake was on the dish. But now it's gone. All the windows are locked. So, who did it? Suddenly, Marjorie hears weird sounds from the basement. She goes there and finds the thieves. A family of raccoons broke into her house and sneaked the pancake. Can you count the exact number of animals in the basement? The task was to count the number of all animals, so the correct answer is 7. There are 4 raccoons, 1 cat, and 2 rats. Let's take a little break now. Have you seen any romantic movies? Well, I hope so, because I'll be showing you some emojis, and your task will be to guess what romantic movie they stand for. Okay, here's the first very easy one. Of course, that's Titanic. Here's the next one. Nothing much, but it should be clear. Do you know this movie? It's The Notebook. What about this one? A relatively recent remake was a great success. Can you recognize it? It's A Star Is Born. Here's the next one. Do you think you can guess it right? It's Before Sunrise. The next set of emojis illustrates another very well-known love story. Can you guess it right? It's La La Land, of course. Here's the last one. It's an oldie but a goodie. What do you think? Everyone's favorite, The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind with Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey. It was Valentine's Day, and Nicole wanted to put a little present in the locker of the student she had a crush on. Unfortunately, she didn't know the code. Luckily for her, the owner of the locker was forgetful too, so there was a note with a hint. Hmm. Can you figure out the combination? Each number is the number of lines in the respective letter. There is just one line in I, four lines in M, three in H, and two in T. So, following the same logic, there are four lines in E, two in L, two in V, and three in Z. So the combination is four, two, two, three. Okay, here's another code for you to crack. This time, you need to help Eric. He wants to get his wife a nice Valentine's Day gift, but he is absolutely clueless about what she wants. So, the plan is to break into her computer check her shopping cart, and get something from there. The problem is that the computer requires a passcode, and the man doesn't know it. Luckily, there's a note on the desk, so he types in 6198. But the passcode is wrong. Can you figure out what the correct passcode is? The note is just turned upside down. Eric should try typing in 8619 instead. Kennedy works in the emergency room. It's Valentine's Day and there's a patient who felt unwell during a college party. Kennedy leaves the room because she needs to talk to the patient's girlfriend. She was at the party with him. Which young woman should she approach? Who is the guy's date?
Keep in mind that the couple was at a party, so they must be dressed nicely. The patient's date is most likely this woman in a pretty dress. Now, let's do some exercises to train your eyes. Here's a bunch of hearts. Can you find one broken heart? Yes, here it is. Good job! The task is similar, but not quite. Now there are many hearts and a few broken hearts. How many broken hearts are there? There are five broken hearts here. Have you found them all? Kelsey came to an antique store to get some presents for her boyfriend for Valentine's Day. She needed a baseball cap for him, an antique pocket watch, and a toy car from the 1920s. Can you help her find all these items for her boyfriend? Here's the cap, here's the watch, and here's the car. Have you spotted them all? Mark, the boyfriend, is getting presents for Kelsey in the same antique store. He needs to find a pretty cup, an antique mirror, and a beautiful photo album. He needs some help too, so keep your eyes wide open. Do you see all these items? Here they all are. One, two, and three. Great job! It's a Valentine's Day party and Melody, the most popular girl in school, is hosting it. Four best friends are standing together and one of them is Melody's boyfriend. Oh, yeah. You ask them who the boyfriend is and here's what they say. The first guy says, the fourth one is the boyfriend. The second guy says, it's me. The third one claims, no, it's the first guy. And the fourth one says, no, it's actually me. If only the boyfriend tells the truth and the other guys lie, who is Melody's boyfriend? Only the boyfriend tells the truth, so he will say, I'm the boyfriend. So it's either the second guy or the fourth one. But if the boyfriend is the fourth guy, then the first one is telling the truth too. So Melody's boyfriend is the second guy. In a city's museum, an expensive golden egg covered in diamonds went missing. The museum workers noticed it in the morning and, of course, they immediately reported the theft to the police. The city's best detective started investigating the case. She carefully looked through the footage and identified three main suspects. Then she saw a handprint on the glass the egg was placed behind. Take a look at these handprints and at the suspect's hands. Who is guilty? It's this person right here. Look, the prints of the fingers aren't full because something came in the way. This person is wearing rings right there, so it's their print. In a little town, someone stole an expensive silver collar for a cat covered in diamonds and precious gems. The shop's owner called the police and the investigation started. There were three suspects. Mr. Johnson said, I came to look for earrings for my daughter's birthday. We don't have any pets. Mrs. Martin said, I got a bracelet for myself. I didn't steal anything. Mrs. Tanner said, I have no idea what you're talking about. The thief is Mr. Johnson. There are cat footprints in his garden, so the family obviously has a pet. There was a robber in the city, and no one could catch him for several months. After another incident, the police saw the robber entering a hospital. They walked in and ran into two doctors. Which one of them is fake and is actually the robber? It's this guy, the one who's wearing headphones instead of the stethoscope. 
Mrs. Stevens went on a three-month vacation, but had her workers coming regularly to maintain the house. When she returned, she realized that one of the workers was skipping quite a bit of work once in a while, going on an unplanned vacation themselves. Who was it? A gardener who takes care of the outside garden, a housekeeper who takes care of everything in the house, or a painter who is coming to paint her house. It's the housekeeper. Look, the house plants dried out. Seems like he skipped a couple of weeks of work and probably only cleaned the house right before Mrs. Stevens returned. Do you think you can figure out who the bride of this man is? It's this woman right here. Look, she has the same tattoo as this guy. A small city's police got a message that monsters silently flooded the town and now live among humans. It's not a problem, but the police decided to identify them all to keep an eye on them. Can you help the police identify in which houses the monsters live? Here's the first task. You see two houses and a vampire lives in one of them. Which one? It must be this house, the dark one where the blinds are closed on all the windows. Vampires don't like sunlight. Okay, the next task is to find the house of a mummy. Here are two possible options. Which house does the mummy live in? This one. Look, there are bandages around the house. The next creature whose residence we need to identify is a gnome. Take a look inside two houses. Can you tell where the gnome lives? Probably in this house. All furniture is smaller and placed way lower than in the other house, so it must be the residence of someone small, like a gnome. Now, we need to find the house of a centaur. Take a close look at both houses. Can you identify the one? This one right here. See, there are horse prints on the pathways to the house. The last one. A real witch lives in one of these houses. Can you tell where you're most likely to be bewitched? Did you notice this cute black cat? That's a famous witch sidekick, so my bet is on this house. On a cold January night, Delaney was found unconscious in the cloakroom when her best friend Jane came looking for her. She was at a house party with a bunch of college students. The police interrogated several students, asking where they were around the time of the accident. Allison said, I was upstairs all the time, dancing with my friends. Liam said, I went to a kiosk to pick up some candy for my girlfriend. There were only drinks and chips. Oliver said, I was talking to a girl. She seems to like me. Who should have been taken to the police station? Liam, it's a cold night and he would need a jacket to go to a kiosk. And if he needed a jacket, he would go into the cloakroom to get it and would have found Delaney instead of Jane. So either he lied or walked past an unconscious girl. Divide 30 by one half and add 10. What will you get? The correct answer is 70. Most people divide 30 by two, add 10 and get 25. But when you divide a number by a fraction, you should actually multiply it by the denominator, which is the number below the line. This way, 30 times 2 plus 10 equals 70.
You find yourself in the middle of a forest with three paths in front of you. The first one is covered with burning hot coals. The second path is so cold that it feels like Antarctica right under your feet. And the third path is covered with sharp nails. Which uh -oh. path should you choose? The second path. All that ice is bound to be gone soon. It's too close to the hot coals. The police were looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he'd spent these last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jeremy told the detectives he sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. He even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's responsible for the accident with Kyle? Billy showed the police just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Jordan was very late for a job interview, but when he drove up to the office building, he found out there were no free parking spaces. He decided to leave his car a bit further from the entrance. Oh no, even though there were several other vehicles in that area, parking was prohibited there. Luckily, Jordan came up with an idea and didn't get fined. What did he do? He took a parking ticket from another car and put it on his windshield. It looked as if he'd already been fined. Hey, I didn't say it was an honest solution. That day, famous chef Logan was going to have some very important guests in his restaurant. He was anxious because his future depended on how they would appreciate his food. Everything had to be perfect. There was only one hour left before the guests were supposed to arrive. And that's when Logan discovered someone had left ugly red handprints on his sparkling white jacket. He examined the stains. It was ketchup. Logan knew that some of the cooks didn't like him. Look at them and try to help the chef figure out who's guilty. There's a pair of gloves stained with something red in the trash can. The only person who isn't wearing any gloves is the cook on the left. He was the one to spoil Logan's uniform. Linda was in a cafe with her boyfriend and their date wasn't going very well. At one point, they both got angry and started to argue. Suddenly, their waiter came up to the table and handed something to Linda. It was a note with a strangely written word. Lowercase t, uppercase r, lowercase o, uppercase u, lowercase b, lowercase l, lowercase e. Trouble? Linda was confused. What could it mean? Can you figure it out? It's a rebus puzzle. The waiter got worried and asked Linda, are you in trouble? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.